Hi everyone, it's Jeremy. I've been using the Redmi Note 12 Pro 5G for over a month and today I can finally tell you what I think about it. The Redmi phone is a series of phones that are a bit special for me because before having my YouTube channel, that's what I bought every two or three years without thinking too much about it because I knew it was the best quality price why show. Regarding the unboxing in the box, we keep the same usual accessories, a SIM card ejector, documentation, a protective case, a USB to USB-C cable and a 60 watt charger. Classic for Xiaomi, and it's always good to have this right at the start and will avoid to make additional purchases directly. If we take a look at the design, it measures 7.9mm thick for a weight of 187g. It is available in three colors, black, white and blue. The phone has flat contour, the back is flat too, and on this black model it has a finish with reflection. The phone is IP53 in order to resist water splashes and dust, and in the upper left corner you'll find the photo module with a main sensor of 50 megapixels, an ultra wide angle sensor of 8 megapixels, and a macro sensor of 2 megapixels. On the top there is a jackpot, a speaker, a microphone, and an infrared transmitter. On the right side the volume button and the power button which shows the fingerprint sensor. On the bottom, the dual SIM drawer, a microphone, a USB-C port and another speaker for stereo. In use, it's still a pleasant phone to hold, there's nothing special in terms of design that would make it stand out, but it's still quite thin and light and it still has the jackpot. Regarding the screen, this one measures 6.67 inches, it is a flat screen with Full HD Plus resolution, it is AMOLED, supports Dolby Vision, HDR10+, has a peak brightness of 900 nits and it uses the Flow AMOLED technology in addition which prevents it from being too large chin. Screen protection is already in place and to sum it up, it's a great screen that allows you to have a good condition for consuming content, browsing social network or simply having a good size if you want to edit photo or take photo. The sampling rate can be left in dynamic mode or forced to 60 or 120 Hz as needed. For the colors as usual, we can use different modes with more or less saturation but also switch to advanced mode to use the choice of color to P3 or sRGB standard. The haptic feedback is also nice compared to the price range of the phone. For the specs part, the phone is equipped with the MediaTek Dimensity 1080. It is available in several versions, 6, 128, 8, 128 or 8 and 256, all in LPDDR4X and UFS 2.2. The system runs on MIUI 14 and it is based on Android 12, unfortunately they will not have the latest Android update and the function related to it and we do not know exactly how many security or OS updates we will have with this one, it is not as clear as on the flagship of the brand. On top of that the phone is 5G as it says in the name, it has Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, NFC. For benchmark, I'll show you the result given by N22, PCMark and Geekbench. In-game with Call of Duty Mobile, for example, you can set the parameters to medium and very high or low and max. On World of Warship, you can play in 60 FPS and very high or even ultra. You can also run Genshin Impact, but you will have to lower the parameters, of course. This is not a phone intended for gaming, it's rather a versatile mobile, which allows you to play a little bit, but it is above all fluid in everyday use, in navigation, the animation function duels also. We also have a few small functions, for example, if you are watching a video, you have a bar on the side, which allows you to activate or not the Dolby Atmos, to put a style on the image you are watching to change the colors, you can open an app on top, practical on YouTube for example if you want to browse social network at the same time or do a search, and you can even have the possibility of keeping the sound active by locking the screen, which normally requires a paid version of YouTube to do so. For the audio part, it has stereo with the two speakers, Dolby Atmos, it also keeps the jack port, which is always practical for wired headphones, but also to connect a microphone if you want to make a recording and the speakers are loud enough and of good quality for this range of phones. Here is a small example of what it looks like. For the autonomy, the phone is equipped with a 5000 mAh battery. I use the PCMark application to reduce the battery from 100% to 20% and I got around 11 hours. It is an automated test which makes it possible to compare with other models and it uses it easily lasts the day and even a little more. 
For charging, it is 67 watt with the supplied charger. I did a test by recording the loading with N22 and it took an hour and 10 minutes to go from 8 to 100%. In normal times, you'll avoid getting below 20% or also avoid charging at 100%. So in real use, it will be under one hour of charging time, which seems to be more than enough. For the photo video part, we have three sensors, the main sensor of 50 megapixels, the Sony EMX766, a stabilized sensor which was previously used on the Xiaomi 12 and other flagship from last year, so it's a good point to find it on this mid-range model and given that now the high-end models cost more than a thousand euros, here it will even be below the mid-range section if we keep a price similar to last year. It also has an 8MP ultra-wide angle, a 2MP macro sensor and a 16MP selfie sensor. For the main sensor, during the day the quality is good with good details, beautiful colors and contrast in general. Sometimes it does have too much saturation or too much sharpness in certain shots, but I think that for many of people is more than enough to take souvenir photo, vacation photo, food and everything that can be photographed on a daily basis and then shared with loved ones or on social networks. For the ultra wide angle, this one does not do miracles and will be just average. It doesn't have a lot of details and it will be better to use the main sensor even if it means stepping back to have everything in the frame. You can also use a 2x digital zoom directly when taking a photo but also use the 50 megapixel mode to take photos using the full resolution of the sensor. Without this mode, it will use pixel binning, which allows to have photos that take up much less space, but in 50 megapixel mode, the interest is to be able to crop the image by zooming in without losing quality, but it also have an option, Xiaomi Pro Cut, which is available on these images, which allows starting from the basic image to create three other, one in one by one format, one in four by three, and one in 16 by nine, perfect for the different social network using these formats. Portrait mode works quite well for cutting and applying bokeh, which you can also modify later, and the selfie sensor also offers good results. It lacks a bit of contrast, but you can add some very easily via the editor available. At night too, the main sensor does really well and allows you to have good photos, even without manually using the night mode. The exposure is generally well done, and if you take the time to use the night mode, the result is even better. For video, it can shoot in 4K on the main sensor and up to Full HD 30fps on the ultra wide angle and selfie. It can record on Full HD 60 on the main one, but it seems that this one does not use mechanical stabilization in video, but only digital, which tend not to be very effective if we work with the phone, but while making slower movement, that's enough to reduce micro movement if you want to film with your hands up, and you have to go through an additional gimbal if you want something stable while moving. So here is an example with the selfie cam. Here you can shoot in full HD in 30 or 60 FPS. You can see the quality of the sound as well uh, because I'm not using any microphone. So this is what you get if you're using it as a vlog camera, for example. As said in the intro, at the time when I shot the video, I do not know the exact price of the phone. Xiaomi told me that it would be improved compared to the price of the previous model. And if it stays similar to the price of last year model, it will make it a really good value for money because for daily use, I think it has everything we need. A beautiful AMOLED screen, 120 Hz, enough power to have a smooth usage on everyday use, even play some game if needed. The battery allows you to last more than a day and a charge fast enough to recharge it in less than one hour. And the main sensor, which is the same as used on several flagships from last year and which therefore offers good results. That's really something that would suit a lot of people and above all without having to put an incredible amount of money. And I think that's exactly what we expect from Xiaomi. I hope that you like this video. Tell me what you think of this phone in the comment and I'll see you in the next one.